guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Ariella and I make videos about medical school and I take you through what my life is like as a first year medical student. So if you're interested in that kind of content, please hit the subscribe button down below. It would mean a whole lot to me. Today, I wanna talk about how you can maintain your productivity at home. And I've seen a lot of these videos circulating on YouTube and I didn't make one in the beginning because to be quite honest, I was not being very productive. Animal Crossing New Horizons had just come out and I'm not gonna lie, that took like a lot of my productivity away and a lot of my motivation to be productive away. However, once that like initial excitement died down a little bit, I kind of figured out what I needed to create a productive routine for myself while I'm studying from home and doing online school or online med school or whatever you're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, so I just wanna like chat about my tips for how to maintain productivity. And to be honest, I didn't really watch anybody else's video, so I didn't get any advice from anyone. I just tried things out on my own and used what worked for me and took out things that didn't work for me. So hopefully this helps you if you're struggling to be productive while you're at home. And keep in mind that like everybody's home situation or like apartment situation is different. And there are a lot of people who really just have trouble focusing at home, myself included. So definitely utilize the tips that work for you, but this isn't like a guaranteed method because at the end of the day, there are gonna be some differences in your routine and differences in the kinds of distractions that you have depending on your situation. So if you are struggling, I feel for you and um, I'm wishing you the best. Yeah, let's just hop right into my productivity tips. So the first thing that I was not doing during my cardio block and I started doing first thing when I began my renal block was I maintained a strict schedule for myself that I had written out ahead of time. So I showed you in the last vlog, if you watched that, what I kind of built my schedule around, but we can chat about it really quickly here. What I tried to do with this schedule is I tried to match it as close to my actual school schedule as possible. So as you guys know, when I'm at school, I get up bright and early in the morning, usually 5.30 in order to get to the gym before traffic. That's not really a factor in my schedule anymore, but I still try to get up semi-early. So I wake up around 6.30 or between 6.30 and 7 o'clock every day. That's pretty much without exception because my body's already used to getting up early and I have the most productive hours in the morning so I want to try and utilize that, those early morning hours. So from 7 to 8 I have time blocked off for exercise. We're going to chat about exercise later but I find that doing my exercise right in the morning the same way I did when I was at school allows me to have a more productive day. And in the afternoon, I'm a little bit less likely to exercise because I don't actually wanna go out of my way to do something. But in the morning when I haven't done anything else, I haven't even eaten breakfast, I've maybe had a shot of espresso for a little bit of energy, I will do my exercise routine, which is complicated, so we'll chat about it later. From eight to 10 a.m., I have scheduled time for Anki cards, and that's either the Anki cards that are on my iPad, which are a review of information specific to the lectures we are given at my institution. I have two hours for that in the morning to get that done. It usually doesn't take two whole hours because there's not a ton of cards, but I have that time blocked off. And then if I finish a little bit early, I will jump into the next section, which is 10 to 12 is scheduled for lecture time. So I do watch my lectures at two times speed because I can't listen to anything that isn't at two times speed at this point. Not even YouTube videos, it's really bad. <laughs> this kind of comes up to personal preference. If there's something that I need to stop and hear again, I will pause it. I, I just like to save time by listening to things two times speed. In general, my comprehension is not impaired by the fact that it's faster. I can still take notes really fast. So, I, this is actually a positive of being forced to stay at home and do learning from home is that I actually think I really enjoy watching lectures at two times speed and to be honest I'm not sure if I'm gonna go back to lecture once we are back at school. We'll see. This is a big if. So from 12 to 1 I break for lunch and then from 1 to 3 o'clock I will finish lectures. Again depending on the day sometimes the lectures will take up even more time than I have scheduled. Sometimes they'll take up less time. So it's kind of flexible in what I actually am doing, but that's just what I have blocked off like in my 
brain map. From 3 to 5 p.m. I will allot time to doing more Anki cards if I haven't finished them on my iPad or I will do Anki cards on my laptop which I think I've chatted about before but on my laptop I keep the board's review Anki cards. I use a review deck that's based on first aid. I don't know if I like it yet I'll let you know. I have really struggled with trying to find boards prep material that I really like, so we'll see if this one sticks. But then in that time block, I will also do um, taking notes from first aid, which you guys definitely have seen. I've been loving doing that because it just gives you kind of a general overview of what you're going to be learning in class anyway. So. I like that. And then also I do quizzes with a 72 second time limit because our exams are now based on a 72 second per question time limit. So I'll just like find the quiz on Google Drive, type 72 times however many questions there are, set a timer for myself and make sure that I can do those questions quickly. In general, they tend to be first order questions, so they're definitely easier to do, but I think some practice doing questions with a time limit is better than no practice at all. Yeah, and so that's what I do every day throughout the week. It is definitely kind of a rigorous schedule and I by no means stop doing work at 5 p.m. Usually I'll actually continue doing work until about seven when we have dinner. And then after that, I tend to not really do any work because my family here we're watching dinner or watching dinner what is that so because my schedule is a little bit more rigorous during the weekdays on the weekends when my family is here and I know I'm gonna be distracted I don't give myself too much to do so I continue doing my Anki cards I work on first aid if I haven't finished that throughout the week and I will watch boards and beyond on the lectures that I've had that are relevant to get additional understanding so that's what I've been doing that's what's been working for me I have my first quiz Monday, which is five days from now. So hopefully we're good to go. The most important thing is that having this strict defined schedule keeps me productive because I know that if I'm feeling lazy or I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing next, I go back to the schedule. I'm like, okay, well, it's 9 a.m. and I haven't finished my Anki, so I'm going to work on that. Does that make any sense? I hope so. And it also keeps me accountable so that I know that if I am like getting tired around 3 p.m. and I'm not really doing any work, I think, I don't know, it's like subconscious in my mind. If I'm not doing work until 5 p.m., which is the end of my schedule, then I am doing, I'm not following it and it feels wrong. I don't know, that's kind of like the little nebulous part of it that I don't really understand, but in my brain it feels wrong. Second tip regarding the schedule is that when you plan it out, put the things that you don't like to do first. Seems weird because why would you want to wake up and do something that you dislike? But when I wake up, I'm most productive and so I want to get those things out of the way in the beginning. So for me, that's note cards. Dear God, I hate Anki cards. I hate doing hundreds and hundreds of flashcards every day. However, it is by far, I found the best way for me to learn. And when I'm doing Anki cards consistently is when I can tell my performance is the absolute best. So unfortunately, even though I hate it, it's probably the most efficient way to study. So I wanted to incorporate it in a way where I would definitely get it done. And that is incorporating it first thing in the morning for two hours or however many hours it takes to finish, specifically the ones on my iPad. And then right now I'm doing my board relevant cards at night, which isn't great because like I said, I'm not as motivated. I'm not like paying attention as much. I find that I'm more easily distracted between like three and 5 p.m. So that might take some tweaking, but I, right now I like physically cannot bring myself to do those cards in the morning. I don't know what it is. Additionally, I use the things that I like as incentives later in the day. So if it's like 4 p.m. and I'm doing note cards and I'm just really not paying attention, I'm not feeling it, I will shut down the note cards and actually take out first aid and start taking notes. That's because I love taking notes. It's like one of my favorite pastimes. I like making everything aesthetically pleasing and whatever. So I've been enjoying that, so I use that as a reward for myself when I'm feeling unmotivated. That way I'm still being productive, but I also am doing something that I enjoy. Another thing regarding the schedule is try and work your schedule around what other people are doing in the house. So for me specifically, our internet is kind of slow. So if we have me watching lecture and my brother watching lecture, my boyfriends like in a video conference, the Wi-Fi just 
completely gives up. It does not work. So if that's kind of situation that you're finding yourself in, I would try and schedule your things around the other people in your house. So like my brother tends to watch lectures in the evening, so I always get up early and watch mine in the morning. Or my boyfriend always has a meeting at, I don't know, I don't know when he actually has them, but for example, he has a meeting at Tuesday, um, 10 a.m. So I try not to watch lecture during those times just to avoid overwhelming the internet because then nobody gets anything done and it's not fun. The like pure fury that watching a lecture that's pausing every two seconds induces is, un it's, I can't describe it. It's so incredibly annoying because I already don't want to be watching lecture. I just want to be sleeping. And then on top of that, I can't even watch lecture. And that is so irritating. This might not be a problem for you if you have good internet. We have decent internet, but it's not amazing. So that's something to keep in mind. If you work in your room, like I do, keep your room clean. It makes like literally a world of a difference in my productivity levels because until the room is clean, I can't be productive. I don't know what it is. So I always make my bed. I make sure it's like nice and I make sure there's no clutter on the ground or leftover cups or anything. Make sure my desk is clean and organized so I can get started and have a productive day. Another thing that you can do to feel better is to change out of the pajamas that you wore the night before. I'm very guilty of this. And this isn't necessarily something that works for everyone. Someone, some people can be totally productive in like their pajamas and it's fine. And I'm not saying don't wear pajamas while you're working, but just change into something different in the morning. And this is something that I saw on Rachel Southard's video and I wholeheartedly agree with her that just like having changing as part of your routine in the morning can help a lot. So the next thing is write a to-do list every morning or the night before so that you have additional structure throughout your day. So I have my normal schedule where I block out generally what I want to be doing, but I take an individualized approach when I make a to-do list. Let me see if I can find mine from today. So you can see my schedule here. You can see I've crossed off things that I've already done today. So I did my Yankees, I watched Thursday's lectures. I did the Ankies for those. I did my quizzes and my first aid pages. So the things that I still have left to do today is working on primary care skills because we just found out that we are going to have a test on Friday on primary care skills that we weren't aware of. It's fine. I feel bad because the administration is really struggling to kind of figure out what they want to do with labs because obviously we can't be there in person, but if you're going to be a doctor, you need to learn how to physically do these labs. So. They're trying their best, but I need to read those 60 pages of Bates, which is not gonna be fun. And then I need to do my laptop Aggies that I do in the afternoon slash evening time. So this is like kind of a light day for me because I got a lot of work done yesterday, which was awesome. So these are just the things that I need to complete today specifically, and then I fit those into my normal outline of my schedule. Next part, I talk about exercise in pretty much every sit down video that I do. And that's because it is that important to me. I schedule my exercise for the same time every day and I use it as a break from working when I need to. So my regular exercise routine is every other day I run the loop around my neighborhood. Right now I am only able to run a mile without taking a break, but <laughs> Hopefully, since we'll be here for a while, that will improve. So I do that every other day, and then on the off days, I will just do like a morning yoga recovery session between the hours of seven to eight when I would normally be running. Optional for me is like an additional walk or bike ride in the afternoon around like 5 p.m. in order to take a break because either like my mom is going on a walk, my brother wants to go on a bike ride. We just find activities to do outside. Maybe my family wants to play badminton or they want to play ping pong. Don't judge, ping pong is a workout. It's really hard. <laughs> yeah, so I will usually, you know, have some kind of activity at least once a day, if not twice a day. And that's kind of what my exercise routine looks like right now. It's a little complicated, but it works for me. And I'm, I gotta be honest, like waking up and going outside and going for a run has been extremely gratifying for me because it makes me more productive. It makes me feel like more energized in the morning. I sound like one of those fitness gurus who's like, oh, running changed my life. It's not that bad. Like it definitely is hard and I'm exhausted at the end of it, but it is nice to be able to get up and do something active first thing in the morning. And that's just me. Maybe you prefer working out in the afternoon. That's totally fine. But 
getting out of the house, getting some fresh air, that's all extremely valuable in maintaining your productivity. You gotta take breaks in order to do work. So the next thing is about your electronic devices. So I kind of vary on whether or not I can be productive with my phone in the room. If I'm having a particularly productive day, I will just plug in my phone on my bed and like hide it under a pillow or something so that I'm not tempted to look at it. I will throw my switch in the drawer if Animal Crossing is calling to me. But if I really want to be productive and I keep getting up to look at my phone and I just like can't control myself one day, I will take all my devices and put them downstairs because you can always rely on your laziness to make sure that you won't check your phone and won't play your game. If you have like a different room in your house where you can store things that you know you're not gonna get up and go walk there in order to get it, I would recommend doing that so that you're not tempted. I also sometimes put my iPad on airplane mode so that way if I try to go to Safari or whatever, Instagram, Facebook, it won't load and that's kind of like a shameful reminder to me like, oh, you're not supposed to be on social media. That's another tip. If you're a boredom or like a stress eater, I would recommend not doing your work in the kitchen if you can avoid it just because you will inevitably end up eating instead of doing your work because you're bored and you don't want to do your work and food's right there and that popcorn is calling to me and I can't control myself. I've been there. I'm actually a stress eater so because I'm doing work and I have like a mild low level of stress throughout the day because I know I'm preparing for an exam that's inevitably going to come get me, I end up eating the entire time and you know that's fine, but it's not great for my health if I'm eating all the time, all day. So, and particularly like chocolate and junk food that we have downstairs. So even though I don't particularly love working in my room, the alternative being downstairs in the kitchen is, you know, not as good. So I've actually like come grown to love my setup a little bit here since I have a much larger room and I can kind of partition the workspaces in my mind. So the bed almost feels like a different room than the desk. Am I crazy? I might be weird. I might be crazy. This next section is about taking breaks. So I wanted to just really quickly touch on something that I think if you are interested in hearing more about the topic, I would recommend watching Tiffany Ferg's video on productivity where she talks about the general culture of being overly productive and being almost aggressively productive in the face of our daily lives and our work lives and our school lives. You know, she makes the point that yes, it is obviously important to be productive, but it is also important to give yourself a break. And personally, I think those two things are completely intertwined. I find that as soon as I am needing a break, when I, like, when, when, when my mind is just absolutely completely burnt out, sometimes the best thing for me is taking a break and then I can come back and I I don't have that issue anymore. I'm completely productive once again. Another disclaimer that I have made in a previous productivity video, if you struggle with attention disorders or ADHD or anything like that, sometimes these tips are not going to be enough for you. They may help you compensate, but at the end of the day, you will probably need to see a professional or a physician in order to help manage those issues. For somebody who doesn't have those kind of problems, taking a break can really refresh your mind and make you productive again. I have friends in medical school, I have no idea how they do it, but they'll stay up all night until like 3 or 4 a.m. studying for an exam, where I find that if I just go to bed at nine o'clock and maintain my normal routine and I wake up early in the morning, I perform way, way better than if I did stay up all night because I'm not putting anything into my long-term memory anymore. I'm just reading it like glassy-eyed and not paying attention. So there are definitely people who can do that, but I think for the general population, taking breaks, having a rest is so incredibly important to your productivity. So I just wanted to touch on that really quickly because I don't wanna make it seem like I'm telling everyone that they need to be productive all the time and there's no other option and you can't take a break. You can definitely take a break. In fact, I encourage it. But there's a difference between taking a break to make yourself feel better and to give your mind a rest so that you can continue doing work for the rest of the day without compromising your mental health and just putting off tasks because you don't feel like doing them. Believe me, I've been there. I know what it feels like. There were times in undergrad where I would just let the work pile up so badly, and in order to make myself feel better about this looming 
project that I had to complete that I let pile up on my own, I would continue to ignore it because if I just continue to ignore it, I don't have to face it and I don't have to deal with the problem that ultimately I've created. It's definitely an adjustment learning to be productive and work at things every day in order to manage your workload. So if that's still something that you're learning, feel free to message me and ask for advice. I don't I can't guarantee that I have amazing advice because at the end of the day, I'm still learning, I'm still figuring it out, but I would love to chat if you wanna DM me on Instagram. Last tip, please, 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 please get seven to nine hours of sleep a night. I don't care if you're at home and your family wants to stay up late and watch like a documentary about tigers and people who kill each other, I don't know. I haven't seen Tiger King yet, don't come for me. Make sure that you're maintaining a good healthy sleep schedule. So for me that means I kind of have to go to bed and get up at the same time every day because otherwise it doesn't really work for me. That's not necessarily everyone's experience but you definitely want to get seven to nine hours a night if you're an adult and especially if you're a student because when you're having your good deep REM sleep is when you're going to incorporate the things that you've learned into your long-term memory. And that's gonna help you take tests. It's gonna help you in the future. It, if you're a med student, it's gonna help you for boards. I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make in college and med school and high school or whatever is that they just don't get enough sleep at night. And so they have to keep relearning the same material over and over again. And that's definitely something I struggled with in my early undergrad experience. So just try and do whatever works for you. Obviously there are gonna be times where, you know, stuff happens and you're not able to go to sleep at the same time that you normally would, but make sure you get those full hours for the most part. Make sure you're not constantly building up this sleep debt that ultimately hits you and you crash. That's not a healthy way to live. I guess it works for some people. I know people who are totally normally functioning this way, but I again, for the majority of people, it's really important that you get that regular sleep. Those are all my productivity recommendations. If you guys have any that you wanna share with me, definitely comment them down below. Like the video if you got an idea for your own study habits, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.